So let's take up this topic of blood vessels in the lower limb. The handout that you have in front of you is taken from the coloring book, the anatomy coloring book, and it's a nice, succinct outline of the major arteries and veins in the lower limb. Uh, make sure you turn the page over both ways. You can see that one side says arteries and one side says veins. So we need to, we need to learn all of these. At first, you're, you're thinking, whoa, you know, I've learned all this other stuff, now I got more. And that's what I'm telling you. This is what getting into a medical career is like. It's always coming at you. Nursing school will be more than this. You think this is a lot? This isn't a lot. Nursing school is more than this. Okay, if you come, if you come up to this level, then you've got a foundation, you've got a work ethic, you've got your skills to go beyond this. But most of us don't start with this kind of learning intensity in our lives. And the quicker you get up to speed or the quicker you say, yeah, I can, I can do this or I can't, the sooner you'll know that this is a career for you. So we've got an artery page and a vein page. Now let's just think about, let's just pause and think about what's the difference between an artery and a vein. Do you know that? They're carrying blood, right? And here's a basic, very, very basic picture of circulation. Of course, heart is pumping blood, and arteries carry blood away from the heart out to various parts or tissues of the body. We typically call them red because most arteries carry oxygenated blood. The red is not the color of an artery. The red is the color of the blood flowing in the artery. And like in this picture, if you look at the two lower blood vessels here, this would be the tissues of the lower limb down here. And the arteries would be carrying the blood out to those. And then the veins are tubes that carry blood from the tissues back to the heart. And so if we had little arrows, you'd have an arrow... Well, there is. They're kind of dark here, but there's an arrow showing you that the blood is going out this way. This would represent all the tissues, all the muscles and bones and everything of the lower limb, and then here's where it's coming back. So make sure you've got clear in your mind the difference between an artery and a vein. That'll, that'll help you when you go to interpret the, the pictures that you have here. Okay, so... Uh, in terms of the lower limb, arteries, and we'll start with the arteries here, arteries are going to nourish all of these tissues. They're going to bring oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood to all the living cells of all the tissues of the lower limb. Now, as, as we look at this, we want to study what's here. You can see that they've nicely outlined this, haven't they? So you've got, you've got, you don't just have a straight list of blood vessel names there. What you have is sort of an outline, and it's in four groups. Can you see that? Can you see four groups of names here? Okay, let's look at them. The first one is there's a hip group. There's blood vessels that cluster in and around the hip. Okay, there's a thigh group. Right, group of blood vessels that cluster in and around the thigh. Right, then you can see that there's a leg group here, and actually these are these two down here below are sort of the leg and foot groups together. Basic or anterior, one is anterior and one is posterior there. So before you get, you know, when you look at this, it looks big and uh, the diagrams I've never seen them before. You can get real anxious, but just pause and say, okay, I'm just going to take this in four groups, and I think you'll see that each one of these is not too challenging. This is like the elephant, isn't it? We say this over and over. When you, when you look at having to eat an elephant, it's just an overwhelming vision, sort of, and it can scare you, and it can put you off. But if you think, well, if I just take it a bite at a time, it's manageable, okay? And that's what you want to see here. So let's, um, let's take this hip group 
just for starters. Let's work up just in this hip area with these blood vessels, and that's where this first group is. Now, I'm going to have you take off this letter A. You can just draw a line through that. This is a major blood vessel in the body, and it's the one that all of the lower limb blood vessels branch from, but, and we'll study this extensively, but we'll do it later in the semester, so not going to be real focused on that for you. Now, one of the things that you're going to see here, here's a pattern that you're going to see. The blood vessels mostly take their names from the bones. If you know the bones well, then this is going to make sense to you. If you stumbled on the bones and you still haven't caught up, you've got a lot more work to do because this isn't going to make as much sense to you. You've got to know that everything that's coming at you in this class is building for you. Everything that you do prepares you to do something more. And that's what's going on here. Now when we look at the hip area, one of the parts of the hip is big and prominent, isn't it? The part of the hip that sticks way up. And I'm talking about up here. What's this big part of the bone called right up here? That's the ilium, exactly. And you're going to see right here that this first blood vessel, letter B, that you see right here is called the common iliac artery, okay? So this and several others are taking their name from the ilium. You can see this is the first artery to branch off of the aorta. Now we should focus for just a moment. You get the ilia, iliac part of this name. And remember, you just told me this is the ilium, that's its name. Iliac is describing an artery, isn't it? Common iliac artery. So we're using the adjective here, not as a noun, but as describing an artery. Where I want you to focus for a minute, though, um, once you've seen that this is iliac and you see the match here, we want to focus here on the word common, okay? On the word common. Why would I use that with a blood vessel? Okay, why do we use that term? Uh, not exactly. Yes, it's, it's going to branch, but at this point, it's in common, right? And so what you're going to see here, see how it branches into two right here? Into letter G and letter C right here. And what do you notice about these two right here? What do these two have in common with that one? Right? They both have the same name, don't they? Here's the principle in the naming structure of anatomy. When you have a common iliac or a common anything, it's going to branch into two, and the two are going to have the same name as the common one. Right? Right? The two are going to have the same root name as the common one. Do you see that pattern? Because you're going to see this again and again. You're going to see it in nerves and blood vessels. Nerves branch like blood vessels do to reach the various tissues that they're connected to. Now, when you have two like this and they branch, then typically what they do is they take opposing names. If this was, say, the anterior one, what would this one be? This would be the posterior. If this was the deep, this would be the superficial, that kind of thing. In our case here, right, we've got an internal one, which is the little letter C, and that's here, right? And then we have the external one. So we've got two opposing words. So a common whatever is going to branch into two whatevers, always. Now this, is, this is a very important pattern for you to pick up. Okay. So let's see what you know. Okay. Let's see what you know. Can you name this one up here? Okay. Common iliac. Good. Right there. And the others, 
right? This one right here is the external iliac. Now, we didn't speak about this one, but notice that this is coming right through, isn't it? What's this artery down here in the thigh? The femoral. Do you remember seeing this in the cat? When we took the skin off the cat, the femoral artery was right there. It's a surface artery. Um, the only reason you can't see it on the models is because the sartorius partly covers it in a human, but it's close enough to the surface that you can press your fingers here and take a femoral pulse. You can feel the pulsing of the femoral artery. Okay, so I want you to notice too that if this was a human body, you wouldn't see any little dotted lines on here where one name changes from another. What do we use in order to change the name? If this is gonna be one name and this is gonna be another and this is gonna be another, what am I looking for? A landmark of some kind. What's the landmark where the name changes here? Why does this one change to this one? Because it's branching right here, isn't it? Right? I've got that, that little letter C, that internal iliac, right? So there's not going to be a line on a blood vessel in a human body. But there are going to be landmarks, like right where this divides. Then you're going to change the name from common iliac to external iliac. Um, it's a little like a few roads. There's some roads around here in some of our towns where if you go from one town into another, all of a sudden the name changes. Right? I've been doing that. You cross an intersection. You're on the same street you were just on. You didn't make any turns. But the name of the road is different because one town wants to call it one thing and another calls it another. And the intersection is kind of like the landmark where the name changes. And that's what's going on here. Why do you suppose these are called internal and external? Internal and external of what? That sounds like out and in what? What is right here in this area that I go into or out of? Not, not that. Okay, close. Not the pelvic brim, but I don't go into a pelvic brim necessarily. What am I going into here? The cavity, right? The pelvic cavity here. The artery is, is coming right down toward the pelvic cavity, and one branch is going to go in, and the other is going to go out, right? The other is going to go over the pubic ramus here and down into the thigh, and that's this one that becomes the femoral. So this internal iliac is going down into the pelvic cavity. The external iliac is coming out. There is an inguinal ligament here, or inguinal ligament, that runs from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the pubic tubercle. Remember the pubic tubercle here? There's a cord of connective tissue. And your body wall anchors into that, but it leaves a little bit of a gap. If you uh, look here on the hip, right, if I put my finger where the inguinal ligament is, see the gap underneath? right down in through here. And that's where the blood vessels and the nerves and other things can get through from the body torso into, into the thigh and get down into here. So common iliac becomes external iliac becomes um, the femoral. The internal is branching off and going down into the pelvic cavity. When you can see some of these and, and know them, it makes a little bit more sense, right? Now, I don't want you to look at your handout. Just look up here, please. I don't want you to look up any name. I, I want you to see that if you know the bones, a lot of this is common sense. Um, I want you to see if you can name blood vessel D. Do not look at your handout. Just look up here. I see little letter D right here, and it seems to be running down this way. Now think of bone features. That's going through what hole here? So what would I call this artery? 
Okay, wouldn't I call it the obturator artery? That is the obturator artery, and that you've got that because you know the bones. Let's, let's see if we can name, I've got some residual stuff here. Okay, let's see if we can name blood vessel E and F. Don't look at your handout. Now, there, you see them coming across here. They're going through the greater sciatic notch, and they're headed for the posterior side of the bone. So really what we need to do is, oh, gosh. Come on. Okay, what we need to do is look on the posterior side. So here's the posterior side. Notice that one of your two pictures is anterior and one's posterior. And this is pointing to these two blood vessels. Here's the greater sciatic notch. They're coming out through here. Now, what is this big surface of the bone called right here? Gluteal surface, right? And all the muscles in this area are gluteal, maximus, minimus, medius, right? So what, I sh what should I call these two arteries? Okay, makes sense, right? And there's one sort of above and one below, so I'm going to call them, right? Let's call them superior gluteal artery, inferior gluteal artery. Does this make sense to you? Okay. So look at this list. This list isn't so scary anymore, is it? Right? You've got the idea of the iliacs branching here in the hip. Right? You can see that this little letter C has these two gluteals going off to the back and the subturter coming down in here. The external iliac is going out and becoming the femoral. Make sense? You can study this. If you, if you would spend an afternoon looking at this and just making sure that you've got it fixed in your mind, then you can go on to the next group and the next group and the next group. And everything else here is going to make this much sense once you stop and kind of look at it. Okay? Okay. I thought that was so clever when I did it. <laughs> Just, okay. So let's, let's look at the next group. Here's the femoral or the thigh group of arteries. Um, we're going to cross out two of these here. Okay. Um, those two are just kind of accessory little things. They're not really truly named arteries here. So I'm going to have you cross those two out. Now, the major artery in the thighs, of course, the what? The big one here is the femoral, right? You can see it running through the thigh there. And most of the others here then are going to be branches. You can see these are um, indented here in an outlining form because these belong, come off of this one and this one comes off of this one. Now, in terms of naming, this next artery here in the area, the profunda femoris, you need to know what the word profunda is. It's kind of like our English word profound. Okay, you see it running right here. Okay, parallel to this one, but in near the bone. Right, so what does profunda mean? Okay, exactly. It means the word deep. It's like our word profound. When somebody speaks in a profound way, they're saying something real philosophical, real foundational. When I was young and in college, it was kind of, you know, the 60s, 70s, that era, and, you know, the, the word deep really had that sort of meaning. You know, if somebody said something really, really uh, intense, something really philosophical, foundational, you just went, deep, man, that's really deep, you know. It was either that or it was heavy, heavy, man. <laughs> and it was, you know, heavy things sink very deep, you know. So it was all the same kind of concept here. But notice the... 
as we said before, the femoral is superficial. The profunda is telling you this, this is the femoral artery that's going deep into the thigh, right in next to the bone. It's going to feed all the deep structures and muscles. Now, other than that, you've got the, uh, the two circumflexes here. And those go horizontal, right? Almost, almost every blood vessel we're looking at is going vertically through the, the body area. These just, this is the widest part of your thigh, is right here at the top. And so you have some arteries that are circling, and the circumflex gives you that idea they're circling. The lateral one circles this way, and the medial one circles inward, okay? And then finally in this list, if you look at genicular, if you know the name of the knee, the anatomical name for the knee is genu, right? So, and you can see there's just a whole bunch of little arteries that circle around the various structures in the knee, right? Very, very active joint, needs a lot of circulation, okay? Okay. So once, once you've worked through this group here, you know why they are, you know where they are, right? Now you're halfway done, right, with this. And this leaves sort of the arteries of the leg and the foot, okay? And, and start here with what are the major bones in the, in the leg? Major bones in the leg are the... the and the... The tibia and the fibula, right? So right away you see two tibial arteries, don't you? Look at this posterior picture. Um, the artery coming down the back of the knee would be called the... Back of the knee has a name. Popliteal, right? You see that up there? See the popliteal? That's this one coming down the back. And then it branches right here into an anterior tibial right? And that's the one kind of, that's coming down the front. If you look right here, you can see it just snaking through. The interosseous membrane here has a little hole at the top, and it snakes through that hole to get to the front. And then the posterior tibial is this one that just continues right down the back and into the foot. Now, the other bone here, that's the tibial names. The other bone here is the fibula. Right? Now, the older term is what is still used in here. The older term is peroneal, isn't it? Right? I think I spoke about that the other day. Peroneal and fibular are identical words. Two words for the same thing. In medical circles, you're going to be working with people that know the term peroneal instead of fibular. The anatomical body in the world has said, let's change this to fibular because it makes more sense and everybody will understand it because they know the fibula is on the lateral side of the leg. Forever and a day, the word peroneal has been used in place of that. So if you're looking here, you're seeing the tibial artery is going to go to the medial side. The fibular artery is the one going to the lateral side on the posterior aspect of the leg. Now, when you get down into the foot area, notice that the two pictures, the anterior picture and the posterior picture, show the foot, but this is going to show the dorsal surface of the foot, which is the top of the foot. Look at any one of the models around the room. If you can see the front of the model, you can see the top surface of the foot, right? The dorsal side. So these models kind of have the foot hanging down like the images do. If you're looking on this side of the foot, what side are you seeing? Right? The plantar side of the foot. If you look at the back of any one of the models, you can see the plantar, the deep underneath side of the foot. All right? So, and then when you get down into the foot, again, bones make the most sense. You see these a little long. There's five little long blood vessels here? What am I going to call those blood vessels? Huh? Right? The metatarsals, aren't they? Right? And you've got metatarsals on the dorsal side. 
and you've got metatarsals on the plantar side. So if you're picturing the bones in the foot, I've got a set of arteries that run at the top on the dorsal side of the bones, and I have a set of arteries that are running on the plantar side of the bones. But see how much scent, I mean, you can pick these out like that, can't you, because you know the bones? What are toes going to be called here? Arteries in the toes are going to be, right? They're going to be called digital, right? You can see two sets. There's a dorsal digital set and a plantar digital set. Now, when you, when you take out all of these ones that are colored, the only thing that's left is kind of the ones leading into the foot here or this big loop right here. So when you study these, take, take the parts that make sense, the parts that are easy, and then add in the more difficult ones, the ones that have something else going on. Do so you see how this goes? Right? You can do this. And if you know your bones well, it won't take a whole lot to just work it through. Take one piece at a time, carry it with you wherever you go, and take little moments of your day to just keep looking back at this, making sense out of it, fitting it into your brain. The more times you look at it, the better. Some of you still think, I can sit down for an hour and look at this, and then I'm going to have it. You won't. Divide your hour into 60 one-minute periods. Look at it 60 times today, one just for one minute each, and you will know 10 times more than if you sit for an hour with this page. You'll remember more. The more times you do it, the better. Not the most time, the more times you do it. Now, once you've gotten down to here, you've got all the arteries learned but we still have then the veins. Okay, so here's the vein side. There's some very, very good news now. Some very good news. Arteries and veins in the same location typically have the same name. So if you've, if you've learned that artery side of the page, You've done 90% of the work to learn the veins. The veins and arteries are going to run side by side. You're going to be able to pick them out very, very easily. Now, in order to take this and learn these, though, notice that there are two groups of veins. There was just one group of arteries, but there are two here. This group at the top here are the deep veins. Okay, the group here are the superficial veins. What's the difference? Okay, deep veins are the ones that parallel the arteries. The deep veins are the ones that are, are side by side with all of the arteries that we did. Okay? Deep veins parallel the major arteries. Now, in, these, in this deep vein list, you can cross out this last one in the list. It will become very important later in the semester, but basically all veins are going to lead to this, superior vena, or this inferior vena cava up here. But we're not going to deal with that. We're going to deal with all of these. Now, if you look right here, don't look at the names yet, but do you see this branching right here? Do you know these? What's this right here? common iliac vein, this is the external iliac vein, this is the internal iliac vein, this is the femoral vein, this is the profunda femoris vein, you see this? If you go through this name, iliac obturator, gluteals, Internal, uh, external iliac, femoral, profunda, circumflex, popliteal, anterior and posterior tibial, digitals, metatarsals, it's all here, right? It's the same. Okay. The only thing that as you look at these, um, notice that they list them from the bottom to the top, right? And that's because that's the direction of blood flow. Blood flows from your foot 
toward your hip, doesn't it? So they've, the artist said, oh, let's, let's just do that. When he lifts the arteries, he lifts from the hip down to the foot. In the veins, he lifts from the foot back up to the hip. So he's listing them in the order of blood flow. So that's part of it. The, the, there's one little tricky thing here that you need to pay attention to. Pay attention to this. These, these letters, notice right up here, plantar digital and plantar metatarsal. Okay, this isn't plantar digital and then a separate metatarsal. This is plantar digital and plantar metatarsal. And this one is labeled A and this one is labeled A1. Okay, pay attention to that. You're going to see these very pictures on the test. These very pictures, exactly as you see them on your handout. Okay, and I'm going to be pointing to various blood vessels. You're going to have to write these from memory. You're going to have to write them from memory. And you're going to have to include the words vein or artery on it. Okay, but there's four of these here, right? The C and C1. H and H1, L and L1, right? So make sure you distinguish like superior gluteal vein from inferior gluteal vein. L would be superior gluteal vein, L1 is inferior gluteal vein. So don't, you know, make sure you look at that closely. <clears throat> so what? Yes, question. Mm-hmm. No, you're not going to see it. everything on the test is black and white. You won't see any color. So how are you going to tell the That's a good question. How are you going to tell? Uh, I wouldn't go thicker or thinner. The what? Arrows. Do you see any little arrows on here? <laughs> okay. Okay. They're, they're going to be, and there's some other clues too. You want to look at this long enough. Like there's an anterior and a posterior picture on each page, right? You gotta make sure you know the anterior look from the posterior look. You know, if you can see the pubis right here, you know you're looking anteriorly, don't you? If the major picture shows you the sacrum, you know you're looking at the back, right? So yeah, you've, you've gotta stop for a minute and make sure that you can see what you can see here. No, no, no. No, but if you're down in the leg and you don't know which is anterior or posterior, the anterior tibial and the posterior tibial, you could get that wrong if you don't know which one you're looking at. Okay? So pay attention to these. Now, the, um, the other group here is the superficial veins, and there's a list here. I have some very good news for you. Okay? You can... Um, the superficial veins are the veins, just to be clear, the ones that you can see through your skin, right? In various places, sometimes on your forearm or the back of your hand, different places on your body, sometimes you can see veins through your skin. So it's like you've got two sets of veins. You've got all the deep ones that are parallel to the arteries, but you've got a whole set on the surface of your body, right between the muscle and the skin. And the, the really good news that you have right here is that I'm going to have you cross out almost all of these, okay? Uh, you should know what superficial veins are, but the only one I want you to know by name is this great saphenous vein, okay? The great saphenous vein. And see if you can find it in the picture. What is so interesting about it? Where does it go from and where does it go to in the picture? Goes from, from, from way down here by the foot, right? All the way up the medial side of your entire limb, all the way up to the hip, doesn't it? It's a great big vein that's collecting blood from lots of littler veins. Now why would I have you hang on to this? There is something very, very medically important about the great saphenous vein. And if you're going to be in any kind of medical work, you should know what this is. What is this, what is this vein 
It has an, an, another use in medical situations. Sarah, you're smiling. Do you know? Do you know? Okay, I thought you knew. That's all right. What? Heart surgery. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. Yeah. This is, these are the veins that are used in bypass surgery. Okay, we could take veins from some other human being, but then we'd be putting somebody else's tissue in your body, and we could, you'd have to take anti-rejection drugs for the rest of your life. In bypass surgery, what you have is you have an artery somewhere that is clogged, like this is showing a blockage right down here in this major artery of the heart, right? And so the surgeon takes a piece of vein and it turns out the great saphenous vein is big enough and stout enough to double for an artery and you can see here's the big aorta this is a big major artery and they just stitch from here right down and connect past the blockage so that we have blood flow the blood here can get out into these arteries but past this point everything is getting very weak flow so we just take a piece of vein and stitch it around and it goes right down then, and we've got full blood flow back into this vein down below. We don't mess around with the blockage. Okay, that's a dangerous proposition. We'll talk more about that when we do the heart. Uh, if it's short enough, they can stretch it, yes. If it's short enough, but in some cases, it's just there are so many veins under your skin that if you take one out, blood is just going to flow through other ones and just go right around it. So it, it depends on how much, how much of the vein you need. If you do like quadruple bypass surgery, you might need a whole lot of it. And when you see bypass surgery, there's two surgeons in the room. There's the one doing the heart surgery, and there's the other one operating on the thigh, taking pieces of the saphenous vein out so that they can provide these bypasses. So this, this one superficial vein is notable and you should know about it. Okay? So there, there's the big picture. You've got a set of arteries here. If you do this right here, you've done 90% of the work if you've learned the arteries. Because now you know all the deep veins here too. Right? And then learn this one other deep or superficial vein and you've really got it. Just don't neglect, you know, don't be so intent on the words that you don't stop for a minute and really look at the pictures. How are you going to tell in the pictures arteries from veins? How will you know if you see this picture that you're looking at an artery picture and you're not looking at this picture, the vein picture? All right, there's the posterior artery. Here's the posterior vein, right? Make sure you've taken a little time and you're clear on which one is which. Because you will need to write the word artery or vein on your test as you go. Are we okay with that? Any questions about arteries or veins at this point? Okay.